you can only be evicted, I said, through the courts. And the last step after a final judgment's been entered is what's called a writ of possession. And the writ of possession is issued by the court, and the sheriff gets it, and the sheriff comes and puts it on your door and says you have 24 hours to get out. So um, your only step if the final judgment has been entered is you can a tenant can try and get that final judgment set aside if the judge mistook the law or didn't consider a piece of evidence. And then if the CDC moratorium does not get extended, and if you don't have your if the tenant does not have that CDC moratorium declaration in the court file, they still should get it in the court file before the end of the year because mm. if there's an extension, you want to get the added protection if, if that moratorium is extended into 2021. Um, but the only step at that point would be um, the landlord's going to apply for the writ uh, possession uh, would be to try and challenge that writ of possession in court. And you'd have to, a uh, tenant would have to find some fault in the underlying eviction action to challenge and have a, a stay or, or have that uh, writ of possession not issued. The other option is, and, and we say this a lot of times to people, is start up a dialogue with your landlord. You know, maybe you've come into some money or you're anticipating some money coming in before the end of the year and say, hey, you know, if I give you, you know, $500, can you not go go forward with the, the writ of possession and the eviction action? And so they say, yes, that's great. Get it in writing. <laughs> don't don't rely on, hey, the landlord told me right. that, uh, you know, he took $500 of mine and that he wouldn't go forward with writ of possession. That's not going to win you in court. But if you have something that's in writing, it could just be an email even this will confirm i'm sending you five hundred dollars and you're not going to evict me if i don't hear back from you um i'm assuming you i'm assuming you agreed with this agreement we came up with so you can actually even after an order of eviction you can contact the landlord or the landlord's attorney and try and negotiate with them a settlement absolutely absolutely i've I've done that for clients in the past where I, i i've and the one, the few ones I've been successful in getting the writ stopped, hmm. I actually got the writ stopped, um, came up with a payment plan uh, between my client and the landlord, and the landlord voluntarily dismissed the eviction. So, therefore, that eviction wasn't on the client's record, and the landlord got their money. Because um, if the landlord goes goes forward with it, gets the judgment, gets the prop- property back, they still have to bring another action to collect on that judgment. Right, and, and in most cases, if someone can't afford to pay their rent, that judgment is worthless. Absolutely. And if you're head of household in Florida, at least, um, they can't garnish your wages. You'd have to file an exemption. But that's another thing why you'd want to call your legal aid, your local legal aid, because let's say they do come back for you for that judgment. You have to, and they want to garnish your wages. And that means they would send something to your employer to say, hey, you got to send a hundred dollars of each paycheck to me. If you're head of household, that can um, defeat that garnishment issue. But you have to file. You have to be proactive. You have to file something with the court, and that's where legal aids come in to help people do things like that. We've been talking to Jeffrey Hussey, who's the director of uh, public interest and litigation of the Community Legal Services of Mid Florida. You can reach them at. Uh, you got a phone number? They can reach you. At, oh no! At what the website is a CLSM. What, what? Yeah, that, that would be great. The website, uh, clsms.org, um, that has all our contact information in there that also has information, uh, self-help information about eviction we've been talking about, but all the other areas of law we deal with. And if you're not in Central Florida, if you're North Florida, South Florida, West Florida, Google uh, Legal Aid. Florida Legal Aid, uh, you can go to floridacourts.org. They'll have a list of legal aids in your community that you can reach out to to, to get the assistance that you need. And, you know, Don't try to do this alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do get served, you got to take action. Yeah, absolutely. you got to take action in Florida, especially within those five days. Otherwise, <laughs> you're screwed. Yeah, and Nevada, absolutely. too, as well. I think Nevada's three days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, 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 varies, yeah. it varies from state to state. But, yeah, most landlord-tenant laws are skewed. Um, in favor of the landlord. Jeffrey Hussey, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I wish everybody happy holidays, and everybody be safe. You too. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com. 
Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. And we have with us here today uh, Jeff Levine from Silk City Hot Sauce, the greatest hot sauce in town. And if you go to SilkCityHotSauce.com and you put in promo code Ed, uh, you get 15% off and you get a free bottle of hot sauce. Plus, you help support the show because it's one of those commission type deals. Mr. Levine, are you there? How are you, Ed? I'm very, very good. Tell us about yourself. Who is Jeff Levine? Jeff Levine is a hot sauce maker <laughs> in Vermont. He's he's the king of hot sauce in southern Vermont. That's what my friend in uh, northern Vermont, who's also in the hot sauce business, tells me. But uh, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a pretty laid back guy. We all have our moments. And, and you were telling me right before we started the show. Well, how, first of all, how'd you get into the hot sauce business? Getting into the hot sauce business started with like a, with, a, with an obsession with hot sauce, going way back to when I was probably just added diapers, and I like ex- was exploring the kitchen and found a bottle of Tabasco, put it to my lips, and the rest is history. Um, just always been always been chasing that heat for you know for every type of meal except for you know breakfast and stuff like that, unless it's eggs. But always loved hot sauce. Going back twenty years, I remember traveling up to Maine and uh, to see a concert but on the way back we stopped at a little uh, farm like on the side of the road and mm. they were selling their products like uh, like you ever see that uh, where just like a little farm stand right at the end of a driveway oh yeah we have them down here all, all the time yeah I'm down in Florida everybody. yeah it was really it was really cool I mean I was I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey so it was it was I was like well you pull over check that out so we pulled over and there was a guy selling you know tomatoes and zucchini and stuff like that and uh he also had a bottle of a blueberry jalapeno hot sauce and his big sign like main blueberries and fresh grown jalapenos mm-hmm. and it was really interesting I, I bought a bottle and um i thought it was one of the coolest things i ever had it was so unique and uh that that pretty much turned into like an, a quest um uh, traveling all over the country uh for different reasons but i would always pick up hot sauce my collection grew and grew and grew and grew. I had hundreds of bottles. Um, flash forward you know, to 2017, I'm living in Vermont. I'm surrounded by farms. And uh, one day I just got inspired to uh, throw my pepper hat in the ring. I went, I went down to uh, Dutton Farm. It's not far from where, I, where I'm talking to you from right now. I started talking to George and his brother Joseph, two guys that run the farm. And uh, I said, what kind of peppers do you grow here? They said, we'll grow whatever you want. Jalapenos, habaneros, Mm. long hots, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, I brought home a big bushel of peppers and turned my kitchen into a a laboratory. And here we are. I see that. If you would have been driving by a meth stand, (laughs) you could have turned (laughs) your kitchen into a meth lab. (laughs) But I said it's a hot sauce laboratory. By the way, let me stop you for a second, man, because you said that you don't put the hot sauce on the eggs. I do. I do. When I I said breakfast originally, I was thinking oatmeal and and, and, and like Apple Jack cereal and stuff like that. But, oh, no, hot sauce is an absolute must on eggs and bacon and breakfast sandwiches, stuff like that. Definitely. Yeah, I don't eat eggs anymore or, or meat. I'm vegan. Uh, but when I get to hash brown potatoes in the morning, you know, my uh, vegan toast, you know, the, what do they call it, the avocado toast, I'll put the hot sauce on the, on the hash browns. Man, uh, and always hot sauce in a, a Bloody Mary. Hey, how come you don't have like a special hot sauce just for Bloody Marys? That's a good idea. The, the Badass Jew, which we'll get into after, that's one of my hot sauces. It's called Badass Jew. You heard that correctly. Yeah. Um, it, it is. It is. It's, it's perfect for Bloody Marys. It's jalapenos, habanero, cherry peppers. And there's tomato in that sauce as well, so it it, it actually works perfect. 
You know, the other day I was on the True and On podcast, right? And uh, they're big listeners to this show. They've been following my show for years, even before they had a show. And so he said, well, I'm going to start the show just like you always do, Ed. Tell us, who is Ed Opperman? And I says, well, Ed Opperman loves hot sauce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you go to SilkCityHotSauce.com, I gave the promo code and the whole thing. So I know a bunch of people from that night uh, went into your website. Uh, but one guy tells me, he bought the badass Jew. All right. But he says he has COVID. I don't know if he's kidding or not. He says he has COVID, so he can't tell if it tastes good or not. But he but he can. He did like the label on there and the, the designs on there too, because it's like artwork on your your bottles, right? Yeah, every bottle has has um, has a unique, one of a kind, original artwork. Um, the artwork is a story in and of itself. Um, growing up in New Jersey, my father was a comic book and oh, a rare memorabilia dealer. And um, we used to go to different conventions from New York to Florida to California, Chicago, everywhere. Um, so I spent my life in, in, in comic book dealers' rooms, and there were, always, there were always artists there promoting their really cool artwork. And it was just a world that, uh, that I was like submersed in. Um, when I started the hot sauce business, I, I pretty much got rolling like everyone else i sell i set up at the farmer's market and the mm. flea market and sold my sauce to the neighbors and uh all the all the, the, the regular routine of um of being like a small specialty food business but uh i don't know one day i was inspired i thought boy well i, I don't know if it was that i was inspired or i just missed you know how you miss things from your childhood and yeah. you just like want to kind of like go back into that place that was so you know like i don't know maybe magical or unique anyways i reached out to a uh, a new england comic book uh show promoter um shout out to gary summers of the northeast comic-con um but i called him up and said could i set up a hot sauce booth at your at your comic convention and he was like i love hot sauce so he sent me an application filled it out next thing i know i was the premier hot sauce vendor at a comic book convention and we actually did well. We did really well. People were coming there, you know, shopping for comics and toys and memorabilia, but we were there. My labels didn't have comic book art at that point. I had a, a dragon on the label. Uh, I met several artists at the show. Uh, Jay Moores, Charles Mossant. These guys are just pro are pros. And Charles came over to my booth and to actually buy hot sauce and taste it. And he started telling me, oh, he loves hot sauce. He's got sauces with 10 million Scoville units at home. I mean, this guy really gets into it. Anyways, we started talking about different labels. And, and we just started like, coming up with ideas as a, almost as a joke. We were just like, yeah, wouldn't it be cool with a hot sauce label? Had a, a femme fatale burning a guy tied to a chair. And he's on fire in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, of a dark city landscape scene. Anyways we said wait a minute these are cool ideas next thing i know i've got artwork coming into my email inbox and and i've kind of revamped the look of my of the hot sauce each flavor has a unique piece of artwork now yeah that's okay now that you clarify that because i thought you said before that each bottle had a unique artwork and i said what are they doing sitting there by hand painting each bottle before they send them nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Oh, yeah, right? that would be yeah, that yeah. would be that would be an under that would be an undertaking. Six hundred bottles per batch, each one with its own uh, artwork. Now each flavor has its own has its own uh, has its own graphic. Excellent. Hey, now a lot of people seem to get into the hot sauce business, right? And Ron Jeremy, who's uh, in the news right now for his legal <laughs> troubles, <laughs> he had his own hot sauce too. As well, is this something? Uh, have you ever like are the hot sauce conventions where you meet these other guys? You know, there are. I haven't been to the Northeast uh, Hot Sauce Expo. It's in New York City. I don't know if it's me or what it is. I kind of stay away from, um, like, the in crowds within this particular industry. I mm. find that it's that it's like a who-you-know type of club. And, and um, I mean, maybe at some point I'll go to a, a Hot Sauce Expo and, and, and mingle with my peers. But I haven't been there yet. I mean, I... I buy hot sauce and I, you know, I seek it out and I try all the different flavors, but I haven't been to the expo. 
Now, off the air, you were telling me about you know how you got into Silk City hot sauce and what your lifestyle is like now and how you enjoy going out. Why don't you tell us about how you what an average day at the hot sauce uh, world? 